In this lecture, you'll learn about high availability, which ensures that your data is still accessible in the event of a controller failure. The following configurations are possible for FAS and AFF clusters. You can have a single node cluster without HA. That is not commonly used because you've got a single point of failure there. You can have a switched or switchless two node cluster. The switch we're talking about there is the cluster interconnect switch. And you can have a switched cluster with an even number of nodes configured as HA pairs. When you have a switched or switchless two node cluster, those two nodes will also be configured as an HA pair. And finally, you can have Metro Cluster, which we're going to cover in a later lecture in this section. So except with the single node cluster, you cannot have an odd number of nodes in the cluster. It's always going to be one or two or four or six or eight, etc. The controllers are always arranged in HA pairs, which are directly connected to each other's disk shelves with SAS cables. If one controller fails, its HA partner takes ownership of its disks so that the data is still accessible. So let's have a look at our controller failure scenario, starting off with normal operation. So here we have got a two node cluster. We have got aggregate one, which is owned by controller one, and we've got aggregate two, which is owned by controller two. And you can see that both controllers are connected to each other's disk shelves with SAS cables. Now, our disks and therefore our aggregates are always owned by one and only one controller. Always. So even if there is an HA event, it's always going to be a single controller which owns a disk at any one time. The other connection that you see here in the diagram directly between the two controllers is the HA connection. The HA connection is used for the NVRAM mirroring of the data and also for keep alives. So if controller one goes down, it's going to stop sending keep alives to controller two and controller two will realize that it's no longer available. So let's say that we do have our failure event that controller one fails. So when controller one fails, because it owns the disks that make up aggregate one, aggregate one is no longer available. So we need controller two to take temporary ownership of aggregate one until controller one has recovered so that clients still get access to that data. And there's a couple of different ways that controller two can learn that it has to take ownership of those disks. The first way is over the HA connection, as I was discussing earlier. That will happen if it sees missed keep alives coming in from controller one. Now, if that is the way that controller two learns that controller one has gone down, that's going to take a little bit of time because it's not going to try to take ownership of its disks with just one keep alive because we might have had just some kind of temporary transient event that caused that. It's going to wait for several keep alives to make sure that controller one is definitely down before it takes ownership of its disks. But there is a way that the ownership can be taken over faster, a faster way for controller two to learn that controller one has gone down. And that is over the SP connection with the service processors. So you learned about the service processors in an earlier lecture. The port that is connected to the management switch that gives the administrators access to the command line and also the GUI and also our service processors are located behind that part as well. And what can happen is if controller one goes down, as long as controller one has still got power, but if controller one itself realizes that some event has occurred, which is a major event that is going to cause it to go down, but it's still got power, then through the service processor, it can signal to the other service processor in controller two and tell it, hey, controller two, I've got a big problem here. I'm going down. Please take ownership of my disks. 
And because this happens, this signaling will happen as soon as controller one realizes that it has the problem, controller two does not have to wait for the missed keep alive. So that is going to cause a faster failover. And if either one of those things happens, the failover will occur. It is best practice that you should have your service processor configured. If you do, then it will automatically send a signal if it's capable of doing that, if it needs the other controller to take ownership of its disks. Okay, so when controller two does take ownership of, its, of the controller one's disks, because controller two is connected to controller one's disk shelves as well, it's got direct connectivity to them, it can take ownership of those disks. So when we do have a failover, you'll see that controller two still has ownership of its own disks in aggregate two, and it takes temporary ownership of the disks in aggregate one until controller one comes back online and is able to service its own aggregate again. So high availability, provides the following benefits. Fault tolerance, in the case of a controller failure, as you just saw, it also allows us to do planned events as well, like non-disruptive maintenance and non-disruptive upgrades. So let's talk about those. So fault tolerance, this was the scenario you just saw a minute ago where we had a controller failure. The other controller, its HA partner, will take ownership of its disks in that scenario. It also helps with the non-disruptive maintenance. So during hardware maintenance, you can perform a graceful storage failover of the node to its partner and then power it off. The partner node will continue to serve data for both nodes while you perform the upgrade or maintenance. And when the upgrade or maintenance is finished, you perform a storage failover give back to gracefully return the data service to the original node. So it helps with maintenance and it was mentioned there too, also upgrades as well. When upgrading the ONTAP software version, nodes in an HA pair are gracefully upgraded and rebooted one after the other. So to do an upgrade, a reboot is an essential part of that process. The partner node will continue to serve data for both nodes while the other node is being rebooted and being upgraded. Aggregate ownership can also be non-disruptively transferred between nodes in an HA pair with no need for takeover and give back. So say we had aggregate one, which is owned by controller one, you can transfer ownership of that to controller two. Sizing is an important consideration with this. When there's a takeover, the surviving node owns and serves the data for not only its own disks, but for both nodes in the HA pair. So it's doing double its normal work. Because of that, it's recommended to run a node at a, a, node at a maximum of 50% of its performance capability under normal conditions. And by the way, I didn't mention this earlier. Of course, a node is just another name for a controller. So by having each node or controller never operating at above 50% of its capability, that means that it can take on the additional load of the other controller if it fails, still be below that 100% maximum so that your clients are not going to experience a performance degradation. Let's look at when takeovers occur. That, that happens under the following conditions. You, the administrator, manually initiate a takeover with the command storage failover takeover. So you can do that at the command line. You can also do it in the system manager GUI as well. Or you shut down or reboot a node. Or if a node undergoes a software or system failure that leads to a panic. Or if a node undergoes a system failure such as a power failure and cannot reboot. And if you're wondering how long this is going to take, well, if operating in an AFF, the higher end systems, with SAN configuration, planned takeovers and givebacks complete within two to 10 seconds. So this is very, very, very fast failover. Unplanned takeovers and givebacks are not much slower. They will compete, complete within two to 15 seconds. A consideration is for SMB clients though. SMB is a connection oriented protocol. So takeover is disruptive to these clients and some data loss could occur. When there is the failover, the ownership of a disk is moving from one controller to another. So that original connection is going to be disconnected. Takeover will not be disruptive to Hyper-V and SQL Server SMB version three clients 
if the continuous availability property is set. The command to do that is vserver shift share properties add, specify the vserver and the share, and then say share properties continuously available. So if you are using Hyper-V or SQL Server SMB version 3 as clients for a volume, it is best practice to configure that option. When give back occurs, there will be a brief outage during a takeover and a second brief outage during the give back of the disks and aggregates. Give backs occur automatically after a node recovers from a panic or reboot and in all cases when the cluster is a two node cluster. For all other cases, so more than a two node cluster, an administrator manually initiates give back with the command storage failover give back. And again, you can also do this in the GUI. Okay, so high availability, that gives us our high availability for our controllers. Your clients are also gonna be connecting to your controllers over the data network as well. Your high availability configuration ensures that your aggregates remain available in case of a node or controller failure. You also need to check your LIF, your logical interface failover configuration as well to ensure that your clients still have connectivity to the NAS IP addresses during a takeover event. This was covered in the networking section. So you'll remember from earlier that this is not a problem for our SAN protocols because with the SAN protocols, the clients are going to have multiple connections, multiple paths we can use to get to the storage system. The clients already know about those different paths. But with our NAS protocols, the clients are going to be connecting in on a single IP address. So if a controller fails, we need the other controller to take ownership of its disks. We also need that IP address, which lives on the logical interface, to transfer over to another node as well. So when you are testing your high availability, and you should test this, you're testing not just for the, control, the controller failover, you also need to be testing your lift failover and also your lift give back as well. So when you do test this, test that it works, check that your clients do still have connectivity, that the IP address on the lift has migrated over. And also when you do the give back, importantly, also check that the lifts have migrated back again as well. Okay, so looking at the configuration for this, the commands are storage failover modify, the mode is HA, and node specify the node name. And storage failover modify enable true, and node and the node name. When you order your system, you get it from the factory. If it is more than a single node cluster, which it most likely will be, HA should already be configured, set up by default the way it comes from the factory. Okay, another thing that we need to talk about is our switchless two node cluster HA. You need to do an additional command here as well. I'll explain the reason that we have this additional configuration in the next lecture, which is about the replicated database and quorum. So I will explain why we need this in the next lecture, but for now, just know that you do need to configure this command if you've got a switchless two node cluster, which is cluster HA modify configured true, and then set privileged advanced, network options, switchless, cluster, modify true. So that just tells the system that it is a switchless two node cluster that is required for Quorum to work correctly, which we'll be discussing in the next lecture. Last thing that I wanted to show you here is the storage failover show command. And you can see in the example here, we have got a four node cluster and we can see that the first two nodes here are an HA pair for each other. The second two nodes are an HA pair for each other. We can see that takeover possible is true. So that all looks good. Thanks for watching. If you want to get hands-on practice with NetApp storage for free on your laptop, then you can download my free ebook, which you can see above my head right now. Also check out my NetApp Storage Complete course, which will teach you everything you could possibly want to know about ONTAP. Thanks.